for such a time as this. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Indeed, words cannot express. Sometimes we groan because we can't express. Oh, what a great God we say. Be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou exalted, Lord. But as we continue, Lord, may your worship continue in our hearts. Let our capacity to worship you increase. And may our worship be accepted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Please, you can be seated. Quickly, before we proceed, I want to say a few things about Maybe in worship. Um, can we look at the book of um, Psalms 34, verse 10? If you can put it up so that we'll just read from the screen. Psalms 34, verse 10. It says, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. The, Lord, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. For they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Can we look at um, John chapter 4, verse 23? Let's see. For the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Hallelujah. Amen. I've always loved to be practical about my walk with God. I love it. So if I see anything in the Bible that does not reflect my own life, I always question it. Why is this not possible with me? So if I see that um, some people in the Bible prayed, and it was as if God was in a haste to answer their prayer. And then there are other people that prayed, and God ignored it. I used to ask why. You know, the Bible says God does not show personal favoritism to any man. He's not partial. Then why is it as if their experiences are different? And sometimes when we look at our own lives also, it does not, it does not reflect what the Bible teaches sometimes. And people have been discouraged because of that. Especially here that we are in this country. They will tell you that, oh, I was a Christian when I was small. They got tired. They got tired of trying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That first place we read said, it said there were people that are seeking God. So you see, they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. They that seek. So the Bible agrees that there are people that seek the Lord. Even the Bible encourages you to seek the Lord. You know, not, you know, seek. Or there are places that encourage you to seek God, to seek God, to seek God. And the truth is that your walk with God, you must seek Him. You must. But do you know, if it wasn't Jesus that said that statement, I would, I would maybe, we would say the person does not understand. But do you know it was Jesus that said in John chapter 4? It says there are people that God is seeking. Yeah. There are people that God is seeking after. So it's not like, oh, they are seeking God, you know? You know, when you're seeking something, it's as if the thing is, is hidden or it's far away. So you are going towards it, you are making efforts, you are, you know, doing all you can. And then, there are people. Why the difference? <laughs> Why the difference? And let me ask, where are you? Are you among the first category or the second? I mean, both of them are good, right? Yeah. But which one do you want to be? The second one says, the time is coming. And now is when true worshippers. He said, for such the Father's scale. You know, uh, Pastor was talking about, um, what is his name, Asa? You know it was Asa's story that the Bible says that God, his eyes moves through and through upon earth, seeking yeah. those whose hearts are right towards him. Yeah. So his eyes are always seeking, seeking. So there are special people that he's seeking. And do you know that God said that I sought for a man among them? Do you know it was in the book of John that the Bible said I found there was a man whose name was John? Hallelujah. What is the difference? Why is it that God would quickly answer? The prayer of Elijah. God will, would say, this one, David, is a man after my own heart. So what other people will do, you know, David ate priestly food, food that belongs to priests. God did not do anything. 
If other people try that, what is the difference why true worshippers? They will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. What does it mean to worship God in spirit and in truth? What does it mean? You know, when I saw that, I, I was curious, someone posted it on Facebook and asked, what does it mean? So I started asking God also, what does it mean to worship you in spirit and in truth? The truth is that you have to go maybe to Revelations and see how worship is conducted in that realm. And do you know the Bible says in Revelation chapter 4, it says that those four living creatures, they do not cease day or night to worship. Yeah. Is that a reality that is possible here? Yes. yes. So was that, is that what worship means in the spirit realm? Because there's no time over there. There's no time. Time is a factor here. There's no time. So yeah. it's like a constant worship. Does that mean that everywhere you go, you except you don't understand what worship means? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So if I'm looking for a job, the question is, God, will it be glorified in this? Mm. Hmm? Do you know you get so far as you're eating? You're eating and you're like, God, <laughs> this food is good, but do you want me to eat it? That's it's everything around you, everything about you, everything that you do. You are thinking about how he's viewing it. So you will see that, okay, let me talk about Lucifer a little bit. The devil, when, when he was made, the Bible calls him the anointed cherub. So he said he moves to and fro upon the coals of fire. That, that pipes and timbre were fashioned into his being. And that when he makes a move, his being, his inside of him shakes and produces music for God. When he moves, so every movement of Lucifer, every action, everything he does produces a sound to God. And it is pleasant to God. Can you imagine? Yes. And then God is saying, I will raise these men. These ones you thought that you've defeated. I will raise them that they will take your place. And that's why the devil will do all he can so that true worshippers will not arise. Yeah. <laughs> so you will see that they have time for God. Eh? You know, some people say, when I'm at work, I'm at work. When I'm in church, I know I'm in church, I will do, you know. Mm. You're not in church. Mm. There is no time Hallelujah. that it's not his time. Hallelujah. For such the Father seeketh. For such the Father as you go today, this weekend or something, let it be your lifestyle. Mm. If the job is coming, the question is God will you be refined. It will bless me, yes. But what about you? Even when you want to dress up in the morning sometimes. Huh? You know, you know it sounds weird. It's as if your life is controlled for such the father seeking. I want to be the one that God is seeking. Imagine that God is seeking after you. Where will you run? Huh? Uh, Daniel, the Bible says, oh, his personal attendants were archangels. See, archangels. Archangels are angels that other angels call angels. Yeah. That's <laughs> Archangels. You know, <laughs> archangel, you know when the Bible said the Lord will come down with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and it will rattle the foundations of the grave. And thinking, they are not small beings, so they are high in ranking. Mm. You can imagine that his personal attendant <coughs> was not just one archangel. Mm. What did he do? And you know, when I, I was reading about Daniel, and then he said, Daniel, oh Daniel, thou art greatly beloved of God. Yeah. The two different angels that met him, they said the same thing. It means in heaven, God is walking around saying, have you seen that? Have you seen Daniel? And every of the angels, every of them know that now. So the first day he set his heart to pray, God sent his heart. Perhaps that's the reason why we are discouraged. We've been trying. We've been trying. But we've not given him all. Wow. Actually, we've not given him. We've given him. But we've not given all. Some, one of my mentors said something. That there's a difference between a man in Christ and Christ in a man. Yes. There's a difference. That's true. There's a difference. And you see so many people end in. They end in Christ. They are new creations. They will go to heaven. They will. But there's another dimension. Uh -huh. That is called God. Christ in a man. He does not come and share. Hallelujah. If he must come, he must take all. Amen. If he must come, if he must come, if he must come, be ready to give him all. And his own terms. For such the father sees it. There are, you know there are people that are ashamed in glory. But let me talk about this. The Bible says, 
I speak of those people who, as though I'm crying, whose end is destruction, yeah. whose God is their stomach, mm. so who glory in shame, and whose minds are set on things of the state. They glory in shame. So if you check other translations, it says that they are proud about things that they should be shameful for. Mm. There are people that are doing shameful things. They are proud about it. So you will see on social media, they will be posting. Mm. They are doing things that are shameful. Mm. And then those that are in glory are ashamed. Mm. Wow. They are ashamed. Mm. So you will see that um, on Friday night, they will go there. Yeah. Eh? And on Sunday, they will come here. They are ashamed. <laughs> I will end by saying, let the story of Eutychus teach us a lesson. Now the Bible says Eutychus, because Paul was preaching long, Eutychus slept. But the Bible says he was sitting in the window, not on the window. If it was on the window, it could either be facing outside or inside. So but sitting in the window is the best way to, to you know, maximize the two words. So if you check your phone, you will see Don Well. You will see Don Jasper. They can use this man to say hallelujah. They can use this to wave, you know, people outside. So they are sitting in the window. It's like a lack of uncertainty. It's, you, know, you know, there's this saying that um, a bed at hand is worth two in the bush, right? One boy said a bed at hand, it cannot fly. So the best thing is that let me at least be here and be here so that I don't lose. They are not sure. They are not sure. But the testimony of scripture is that you think it's fair. Yes, sir. And when you want to fall, you will not fall inside. Mm. You, will fall you will fall outside. You will fall outside. That's it. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. You don't stumble upon anything valuable in God by mistake. Mm. Yes. You want Him. And you want the testimony of Scripture to be your testimony. You must give Him all. Yes. Can we rise to our feet? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hmm. There are some that He's seeking after. Hmm. I sought for a man. Hmm. I sought for a man. I sought to remark. I want to see this question. Are you the one to come? Or should we wait for you? Are you the one God has been seeking for? Or should we continue to seek after? Maybe you came with fire. You came maybe to this country with a lot of zeal. And now the mentality of freedom, we're free and we can do, has, has entered in and then you've given yourself your own space. You say, yes, God can take over some, but this one is my time. Are you here? You want to say, God, I give it to you again. I give it to you again. You can come out if you want to. I will advise you to. Because there are some that God is seeking after. It, it baffles me that this great God, this great God is seeking after some species of people. I want to be among those. Maybe you are here. You've lost it. 